Hi, so today's topic is on cirrhosis of the liver. Cirrhosis is a chronic, progressive, and irreversible disease of the liver, characterized by diffuse fibrosis and scarring. Inflammation caused by toxins or disease results in extensive degeneration and destruction of hepatocytes. The overgrowth of new and fibrous connective tissue distorts the liver's normal lobular structure, resulting in lobules of irregular sizes and shape which with impeded blood flow, obstruction of biliary channels result, resulting in bile stasis causing destruction of the liver cells, leading to liver failure. The development of cirrhosis is an insidious, prolonged course, usually after decades of chronic liver disease. Cirrhosis is twice as common in men as in women. The etiology and pathophysiology. The specific cause is not always known. Any chronic liver disease, including excessive alcohol intake and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and NASH, which is non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, can cause cirrhosis. Post-necrotic cirrhosis refers to cirrhosis caused by viral hepatitis and certain drugs or other toxins. The most common causes of cirrhosis in the United States are chronic hepatitis C infection and alcohol-induced liver disease. Hepatitis B and C can cause chronic inflammation and cell necrosis, resulting in fibrosis and ultimately cirrhosis. Lennox or alcoholic cirrhosis is caused by alcoholism. Hepatitis with alcoholism has a synergistic effect and can accelerate liver disease. Biliary causes of cirrhosis include primary biliary cirrhosis and primary sclerosing cholangitis. Primary sclerosing cholangitis is a chronic inflammation condition, inflammatory condition affecting the liver and the bile ducts. Cardiac cirrhosis includes a spectrum of hepatic derangements that results from long-standing severe right-sided heart failure. The treatment is aimed at managing the patient's underlying heart failure. Other causes include environmental factors, malnutrition, extreme dieting, malabsorption syndrome, ex um, and obesity. Environmental factors and a genetic predisposition like Wilson's disease copper accumulation may also need to the development of cirrhosis regardless of dietary or alcohol intake. This is a picture of a cirrhosis that develops secondary to alcoholism. The characteristic diffuse nodularity of the surface is due to the combination of regeneration and scarring of the liver. Clinical manifestations the onset of cirrhosis is usually insidious. Early symptoms can include fatigue. Many patients with normal liver functions or compensated cirrhosis may not be aware of their liver condition. The diagnosis may not be discovered until later when they present with symptoms of more advanced liver disease. Later symptoms may be severe and result from liver failure and portal hypertension. Jaundice Peripheral edema and ascites develop gradually. Other late symptoms include skin lesions, hematologic disorders, endocrine disturbances, and peripheral neuropathies. In the advanced stages, the liver becomes smaller and nodular. Jaundice results from either hepatocellular disease or intrahepatic obstruction. Hepatocellular jaundice occurs because the liver cells cannot excrete bilirubin effectively. So serum bilirubin levels elevate. Intrahepatic obstruction results from edema, fibrosis, or scarring of the hepatic bile channels and bile ducts, which interferes with normal bile and bilirubin excretion. Jaundice also causes pruritus or itching. Various skin manifestations are commonly seen in cirrhosis because of an increase in circulating estrogen as a result of the damaged liver's inability to metabolize steroid hormones. 
spider angiomas or telangiectasia or spider nevi or small dilated blood vessels with a bright red center point and spider-like branches. They occur on the nose, cheeks, upper trunk, neck and shoulders. Palmar erythema, a red area that branches, blanches with pressure, is located on the palms of the hands. Hematologic problems include thrombocytopenia, leukopenia, anemia, and coagulation disorders. Thrombocytopenia, leukopenia, and anemia are caused by splenomegaly. Splenomegaly results from backup of blood from the portal vein into the spleen or caused by portal hypertension. The enlarged spleen destroys platelets causing thrombocytopenia and increased risk for bleeding. Anemia is also due to inadequate RBC production and survival, poor diet, poor absorption of folic acid and bleeding from viruses. In cirrhosis, the production of bile is reduced which prevents absorption of fat soluble vitamins which is A, D, E and K. Without vitamin K, clotting factors 2, 7, 9, and 10 are not reduced in sufficient quantities and the patient is susceptible to bleeding. Coagulation problems are manifested by hemorrhage or bleeding tendencies such as epistaxis, purpura, petechiae, easy bruising, gingival bleeding, and heavy menstrual bleeding. Endocrine problems Normally, the liver is very important in the, develop, in the metabol metabolism of adrenocortical hormones, estrogen, and testosterone. In men with cirrhosis, gynecomastia, or benign growth of the glandular tissue of the male breast, loss of axillary and pubic hair, testicular atrophy, and impotence with loss of libido may occur because of increased estrogen levels. In younger women with cirrhosis, amenorrhea may occur, and in older women, there may be vaginal bleeding. The liver fails to metabolize aldosterone adequately, resulting in hyperaldosteronism with subsequent sodium and water retention and potassium loss. Peripheral neuropathy is a common finding in alcoholic cirrhosis and is probably due to a dietary deficiency of thiamine, folic acid, and cobalamin. Complications. Patients without complications of cirrhosis are said to have compensated cirrhosis, and those who have one or more complications of their liver disease have decompensated cirrhosis. Major complications of cirrhosis are portal hypertension with resultant encephalopathy, sorry, portal hypertension with resultant esophageal or gastro gastric viruses peripheral edema, NSIDIS, hepatic encephalopathy, which is indicated by mental status changes and including home coma, and hepatorenal syndrome. So the first is portal hypertension. Portal hypertension is a persistent increase in pressure within the portal vein greater than 5 mm of Hg. It results from increased resistance or obstruction of the flow of blood through the portal veins and its branches. The resistance to flow results in formation of collateral venous channels around the high pressure area where the collateral and systemic circulation communicate. The blood flow backs into the spleen causing splenomegaly. Veins in the esophagus, stomach, intestines, abdomen, and rectum become dilated and can result in ascites, esophageal varices, prominent abdominal veins around the umbilicus, which is referred to as caput medusa, and hemorrhoids. Increased hydrostatic pressure in the portal veins forces the plasma proteins to leave the intravascular compartment to the lymphatic system. When the lymphatic fluid is not able to drain into the general circulation, the plasma and proteins seep into the peritoneal cavity and other third spaces. The increased osmotic pressure of the proteins pulls additional fluid into the peritoneal cavity, and this results in massive ascites, sometimes up to 15 liters. 
Esophageal varices are collateral cha channels connecting the portal and coronary veins that lead to reversal of blood flow and formation of thin walled varicosities in the submucosa of the esophagus. There are, these are prone to rupture. Bleeding esophageal varices is a life-threatening medical emergency. This is a picture of uh, gross ascites. Ascites is manifested by abdominal distension with weight gain. If the ascites is severe, the umbilicus may be averted. Abdominal stray with distant ab abdominal wall veins may be present. <coughs> Next is hepatic encephalopathy. A major source of ammonia is, is the bacterial and enzymatic deamination of amino acids in the intestines. The ammonia that results from this deamination process normally goes to the liver via the portal circulation and is converted to urea, which is then excreted by the kidneys. When blood is shunted past the liver via the collateral vessels or the liver is unable to convert ammonia to urea, the levels of ammonia in the systemic circulation increase. The ammonia crosses the blood-brain barrier and produces neurologic toxic manifestations. Clinical manifestations of encephalopathy are mood disturbances, mental status changes, speech problems, and sleep disturbances from lethargy to coma. Hepatic encephalopathy may be reversible with early interventions. Later neurological symptoms include altered level of consciousness, impaired thinking process, and neuro neuromuscular problems. A characteristic manifestation of hepatic encephalopathy is asterixis or flapping tremors. When asked to hold the arms and hands stretched out, the patient is unable to hold this position and there will be a series of rapid flexion and extension movements of the hands. Feeder hepaticus is a distinctive breath of chronic liver disease characterized by a fruity, musty odor. This results from the inability of the liver to metabolize and detoxify mercaptan, which is produced by the bacterial breakdown of methionin, a sulfurous, ac a sulfurous amino acid. Next is the hepatorenal syndrome. This indicates very poor prognosis and is often the cause of death in these patients. With portal hypertension, ascites and splenomegaly, there is generalized vasodilation and thus decreased arterial blood volume. This triggers renal vasoconstriction resulting in renal failure. Hepatorenal syndrome is manifested by a sudden decrease in urinary flow or oliguria elevated bun and creatinine levels and abnormally decreased urine sodium excretion and again hepatorenal syndrome indicates very poor prognosis and lastly systemic bacterial peritonitis patients with cirrhosis and ascites may develop acute systemic bacterial peritonitis those susceptible for those with advanced are those with advanced liver disease the bacteria responsible for SBP are typically from the bowel and they reach the acidic fluid after migrating through the bowel walls and through the lymphatics. Clinical manifestations include fever, chills, abdominal pain, and tenderness. <laughs>